Take that, you bully. Horrible spawn. Look at this Rado with Jack's behind as well. Six is a disaster. Oh, oh, oh look at that rail. rail. It's quite a beautiful rail. Seven. Wow. Eight. <laughs> He's almost embarrassed. What's up, poker fans? Welcome back to another Black Cash Poker video, where we bring you the best highlights and moments of the most entertaining poker events. Before getting into it, we would like to ask you guys to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, as your support is allowing us to continue posting videos consistently. Welcome back, everybody, to the Party Poker Live Millions World Final Table. As you would expect, this is how they stack up to start the final. Paul Tadeshi with the shortest stack, but 32 big blinds is a lot to be getting on with. And there you go. Total prize ball 10 million, nearly reaching the guarantee, falling six players short. And you see how things look there. Champion will walk away with $2 million, and of course, the title of Millions World Champion. Be interesting when the players find out that that's what's happened. HL for pocket nines. Well, this will go some way to helping him. Steve O'Dwyer finds pocket jacks in the next seat. Pulls out a three bet to 4.5 million. He knows Steve will be trying to put a lot of pressure on him, so he may elect to just slow play this one. Steve has a lot of bluffs here. Just counting out to see how easy it will be to have some four bet bluffs. This tank size doesn't lend itself too well to that. And he has less than 40 bigs. So he does decide to slow play. I like this. Keeps in all those bluffs from Steve. Checks. And this is a clear C bet for Steve. Checks. Somewhat vulnerable. And as I say, he has a lot of bluffs in his range. Just can get action from worse hands. Paul had a smaller pocket pair. It'd be very hard for him in this situation. Steve goes for the same bet. He made it pre-flop. 4.5 million. All in. All there it is. All in move. Snap call from Steve. Six spades on the turn. Ace of clubs on the river, no use. Pool doubles up to 52 million. Steve drops down to the same number. Just like that, the shortest stack at the table doubles up and is now second in chips. Roger, 1.5, under the gun, plus one. Andras, ace king of suit in the next seat. Roger just raised forward of the last hand. Roger in a pretty tough spot here. Last time was much easier to fold the king queen. Ace queen, that much stronger. Knight. A bit we saw he had a lot of hands. Of course, Roger does make the call with ace queen. 10 8 deuce all clubs. Well, Roger looking pretty good on this one. His hand's in great shape if Andras has no club, and that is the case. And just very hard to see with this board with ace king red. Is going to bet 4 million. Roger. Well, pretty clear call cool holding the Queen of Clubs. Just 4 million. Already things getting a little scary. The pot gap will be up to 20 million. Roger with just 22 behind if he makes this call. Queen on the turn. Jin for Roger makes top pair. Andras picks up a gut shot draw to Broadway. Has been checked over to him. Got to be a little concerned. What kind of hands Roger flats the three bet with. And then calls on the flop. Of course, four way club combos would be the strongest. Some pocket pairs. 
So he's going for the former like this. Andras having three bet and bet the flop does have some strong hands in there, but are worse. And just gives it up. Roger up to 42 million in chips. Mm -hmm. And pocket jacks, 1.575 million. And look at this, for the third time in a row, Ace King is out there. This time it's Paul in heart against the chip leader. Wouldn't be surprised just to see him flat here. <laughs> he is going to raise it up pretty small, just over, just under 3x, in fact. Steve Edouard, ace queen off in the next seat. Now, I like this from Steve. Makes it 11 million to play. Ben will in a horrible spot. <laughs> Look at this, Feraldo with Jacks behind as well. well. Of course, he a lot shorter than the others with 30 million in chips, just over 40 bigs. But with only 30 million, it would only be 19 million more to call for Steve. And as some of those bluffs are hands like Ace Queen, this is a horrible spot for Feraldo. There we go, he does it, let it go. Expect Ben to do the same. <laughs> Unfortunate for Steve here that Paul happens to have Ace King because he's made two pairs of jacks fold. Yeah. And again, Paul wrapping huge strength. If he were to fly bet here, given that he's three bet the chip leader in the first place, he does move all in. Oh, I don't think Steve's done anything wrong here. That was the perfect candidate to make that move with. Given they are second and third in chips to start this hand. Ferraldo and Ben 86. We pat themselves on the back having seen Paul move all in. Roger joins the party. Jack Six of Diamonds from the Big Blind. Queen 9 3, two hearts. Monstrous flop for Zhao. He with an open and a straight draw and flush draw, but Paul with bottom set. We will see a big one here. Paul surely will see bet this flop texture. Or raise or call. I suspect he may just call this. That will allow Ferrada to call also. He may see this go three ways to the turn. Don't forget, Paul is a fair bit of strength C betting into the two ranges of Zhao and Neil. That is on Ferrado now. Facing a bet and a call in front of him. Holding top pair. Won't be loving life though with the Queen and a 10 kicker. Oh. Oh. 17 million chips in the middle for this one. And what a lovely looking card that is for Paul. The deuce of spades. Eight million. Just eight below million. half pot, eight million the bet. Five, four. Makes the call, and now Ferrado can surely get away from this, having seen the same action repeated on the turn. If Xiao had folded, he may have hung around. But once Xiao calls, he knows normally has a better queen. Brick on the river, unsurprisingly the way Paul's day has been going. <laughs> well, two options here, check or bet. I don't like check, it only works if you think your opponent. There it is. Yeah, of course, folding that missed draw. A nice bet size here from Ben, over 3x, targeting one of these medium stacks. Oh, 
Roger does make the call with 10 8 of hearts and flops top pair on 10 6 3 rainbow. Very good looking flop for his hand. Does, of course, check it over to the pre flop three better. Bentelarine with ace high. And looks like he's going to keep up on that MO. Betting just 3.2 million. This will allow Roger to call with some weaker aces. Four on the turn brings a backdoor diamond draw. Ben does have the ace of diamonds. Roger checks his top pair. Well, he is going to fire eight million this time. As well as, of course, the strong hands. Roger calls the eight million, having it just under pot behind. There's another big pot goes down on this. Millions World final table. Queen on the river. Ben finally makes the winning hand. Roger checks, and this is beautiful for Ben. And flop. So there are some bluffs in there. But he has a lot of strong hands here Boy. as well. He does move in for 32 million, is Roger's stack. And well, Roger hates this one. Does make the fold. Good fold from Roger. Yet again, a very well played hand by both players. Reiner, ace six in the big blind. He will peel. Take a flop heads up. Six, four, three. Reiner flopping top pair. Pretty an unlikely card to flop top pair with. Oh, with a gut shot draw with his pair of deuces. Three point four, going a little larger, trying to sway some of the light peels. It's really targeting uh, overcards, ace highs, etc. Of course, always a little worrying when you face a bet this size on your Rhinos chip stack because of the. Short stacks around, he really doesn't want to bust. He doesn't want pot swelling to a position where he can be put all in by the river. And that flop bet size does just that. Well, five on the turn gives Paul the straight. Ryan right, drawing just a chop. Here we go. He does take that option, bets four million. Paul, of course, far from the nuts, but straight. Feel pretty confident with. Rhino will feel a little uneasy about that. He's obviously trying to knock out just over card combinations. Once he beats all the other two pair combos, he's going to bet this blocking bet as well, of course. Does stop him getting raised unless Paul had a flush. Paul, of course, just with an easy call here. Not, not loving life. Ryan, a lot of his bluffs on the turn would have included heart combos. But for just five and a half million, way too good a price if he's getting bluffed. And of course, very outside chance. Ryan also has a deuce. And Ryan gets the bad news. His opponent did turn that straight. It wouldn't take a lot for these guys on 15 bigs behind the jam. Well, here we go. Jao, 17 and a half million. Exactly that. A perfect situation for him in his mind to jam. 17.5 bigs. Pardon me, less than that, of course. We are 6 12 now, so even more attractive position for him. He does move them in. Music to the ears of Paul. It'll be the third time he takes a short stack all in. Well, it'll be third time lucky. And does fold. Snap call, of course, from Paul. So for the third time of asking, will we lose someone in ninth place? Ten or eight would give him additional outs. Well, the ace 
Top set for Poole. Knuckles on the table. Xiao is eliminated in ninth place. It took over three hours to lose a player. But it is Portuguese high roller. Making his way out. Does pick up, of course, $250,000 for his efforts. I mean, he doesn't have full equity, does he? I mean, I, th I think this is basically a, f um, a spot where we sort of just have to gamble. You know, Steve is obviously going to be opening with lots of hands. Obviously, we're flipping a lot because he is going to be calling us. This is a disaster, though, with Roger behind and picking up the eights. And Roger just getting a count, of course, eights. Very strong a hand against Ferraldo's range. And see and Steve. Else. He does do so. There it is. Gets Steve out of the way. So I was going to call, of course. Ferraldo needs a deuce. Yes, yeah, this is pretty thing. gross. Yeah. Is Ferraldo in need of help? We find ace, 10, 4, all spades. Back, well, backdoor chops. Yeah. Spade, spade. Just the deuce. Yep. Queen on the end. No good. He taps the table. Uh, good game, Neil. Here's Neil out in eighth place, picking up $300,000. Not too shabby. Yeah, I mean, obviously we know Neil's background. He has a lot of stellar results. I know I know you'll be very disappointed. 2.5, the bet. I think I'm going to switch my allegiance to Andres from Feraldo. I just, I just kind of admire yeah. the heart he's showing and taking on the big stacks. Oh. Rhino with King Jack on the button against that late position. So, pardon me. I think Andres had raised. Uh, Steve's raised from plus one. Wow, is he? Is he oh, I was about to say, interesting spot. Wow, Rhino's going to put this in. He is going to put it in, and of wow. course, Steve will have to call this. He won't love it, will he? No, he's not going to be thrilled. 13 big blind shove from Rhino. <laughs> you say he's not going to love it. He absolutely fist pumped it in. <laughs> oh. I was dead to the back doors. Yeah, this one looks going to take a little bit more work than the last one to get out of. Can the former super high roller bowl champion wiggle his way out of Steve O'Dwyer's grip? The answer is no. Six of diamonds on the turn. Confirms his exit in seventh place. Well, he'll be one that I expect will be making his way over to the 250k. I know yeah, Rainer, like... Very, very strong players. We know massive high, high roller pedigree. Look at that, guys. That's why we've got such an overlay. It's an empty poker room. Main event, <laughs> I guess, on dinner break. <laughs> Not quite that good an overlay. I know. In my experience, you know, this is something that's coming more into poker. People are limping in early positions so that they can call a raise, and you know, rather than opening and be three bet, and then inflating the pot. Like typically, you see people doing it with suited broadways and maybe hands like this that aren't right. aren't the elite elite hands. Like, it, I don't think it's crept fully into the game yet. You know where people are limping ace king off here, for example, and then and then looking to proceed. Well, he did over. Oh, he over limped with okay. the seven six suited, which which is pretty good, right? But yeah. And he doesn't mind taking it multi way, I guess. Pull from the small computer king seven. Steve with deuce four on the big checks his option. Sees him flop and open in his straight draw. It is Paul and Ben who flop top pair. Ben with a gut draw to go with it. But Roger, after all of that, is still out in front with an over pair. So something for everyone here. And it is Steve coming out firing from the big blind. You know, anything can happen. And th with these specific set of hands, this is going to be super interesting. Steve, you know, this obviously, as we know, this. Uh, Flop favors Steve a lot, right? Steve has all the two pair combos that got to see the flop for free. Right. Has all the four six offsuit for the straights, and also has the f the four in his hand that will block the four six for the straight. Roger must continue now. Ben, I mean, I don't think Ben can ever fold here. Top pair in a gutter. All right. Yeah. I would expect him to overcall here. I think. And then what's Paul gonna do? This is pretty. Yeah, Paul in a pretty bizarre spot against yeah. him. He has king seven, but hand doesn't really ever improve bar hitting two pair. Doesn't know what the bad turn cards are even. Sure. Would you be that shocked to see him fold? I, th I actually think he'll fold quickly here. There's there's just so, so many oh. bad turns. There where we go. Yeah, did he, he did fold quickly. As you, as you said, qu you, not only did you call him folding, but quickly. Yeah. Snap folded. Well, he would have liked that turn because it would have given him a flush. Roll. I mean, the life of O'Dwyer. But <laughs> Steve O'Dwyer <laughs> finds a straight. Roger finds an open ended straight draw and an over pair. And Ben with top two pair. Ben uh, Benjamin can for sure have 8-9. But obviously with such a coordinated board with 
two flush draws. Expect Steve to bet to try and uh, get value and protect his vulnerable straight. And of course, no blockers to the pairs has size pretty big because he, yeah. he can run into two pairs on this kind of board, especially in, I guess, in Ben's range more than Roger's, as you say, Roger limping under the gun. I, th I, th I think Roger just must fold here. The problem is we do also have Ben behind who c could, uh, even though we blocked it, nine suited, could have one of the combinations of that. Ben can have a set, right? For sure, yep. the way this hand's played could have a straight also. So we've right. basically forced to fold our eight. Sixes and fours play the same way, wouldn't they? They would, for sure. Well, Steve's showing a lot of strength, having bet the flop and then bombed the turn. But of course, Ben, you know, even if he's suspicious he's beat here, he, he has he's to call, right? Because he, yeah. he, he has top two, he can improve. Sure. Um, it's actually not impossible that we can bluff some rivers if we do think that Steve has a four in his right. hand. Right, a spade being the primary yeah. uh, candidate. Even an eight or a nine, right, is like not impossible that we might go for this. Well, five does pair the ball, but Ooh. not the one Ben wanted. But he does block both the houses, though. Yeah, well, bo both the top houses. Excuse right. me. What is this? You put too much. Oh, I put too much. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. Oops. Well. Not not the worst river card in the deck for Steve, but not a no. great one either. Like you say, a lot of the hands Ben calls the turn with that aren't the flush draws are of course two pairs. Yeah, this is this is sets. super interesting because you know, does does Ben even get to the river here with nine ten of spades, for example, for right. fifteen million on the turn? I'm not sure he does. It's not impossible that Ben goes for this, but will he think he can have enough showdown but or does he recognise he right. needs to bluff Steve off or straight? Right, Steve does have some plus himself, of course. Some of those yeah. combo spade draws, like if he had eight of spades, don't have a spade in his hand, might play this sure. way. Does Steve have enough value hands on the turn that can check for the river? A lot of Steve's value hands himself would now be four houses, right, that he yes. may check. Although the interesting thing about that is, let's say that uh, Steve had 7-5 or 6-5 on the turn against two opponents when it comes four to straight, would he right. bet 15 million? Very interesting hand, actually. Every decision here for the short stacks is just so precarious. 12. Charles does defend, which is, you know, definitely viable. Heads up against a cutoff open. Ooh. Wow. What a flop this is. Not flush draw, gut shot, and an over for Roger Charles. Bottom pair. And does all the king of hearts, which is... I mean, this. the problem here is, I mean, this is going to be a pretty trivial bet call it off for Roger, or bet with to look to shove turn. This is what's so tough about playing these hands out of position off this shallower stack. Roger does continue with a lot of hands he bets with on this kind of texture. Wow. Well, there is the all-in. I mean, it's never getting through. Yeah, Roger snaps. Well, Charles will be delighted to see when he does get snapped. He is sure. actually up against the draw rather than a made hand. He is still 41%. King Ooh. on the turn. Well, that what removes a huge card. Yeah, few of the outs. Ace and eight, no longer good. King on the end. Well, that, that, that's a pretty good run out. King's full for Charles. Uh, he now up to thirty-seven million. So off the bottom of the floor. I'm quite interested to see Paul Peel here. Not that it's necessarily terrible or anything, but you know. Andres feasibly has a pretty strong opening range here, and even Charles calling the button is never going to be monumentally weak or anything. And from the small blind, it's difficult for us, you know, to just hammer the players. Do you, do you think here Steve's looking at ace-10? Is this a spot he can squeeze? He knows Andres is likely to get a little out of line. He loves yeah. to open pots up. Charles is pretty capped when he just flats, and, yeah. and uh, of course, pull the same. That could have been a spot, and you know, if he ends up three bet getting in against Andres, so be it. He's got ace ten. Sure, I think that is the main concern there for Steve. We have seen that Charles is peeling quite wide in some situations, uh, and yeah, if we squeeze, we're just going to have to call off Andres and probably fold to the other two. But yeah, Demps, it definitely could have been viable. There's a lot of money in the pot already. I like a check here. More time on board, of course. Wow! Wow! What a turn card for Charles. As he makes the straight, Steve still with second pair. Andras with well, the open ended straight draw, second pair, and the queen high flush draw. Steve should check here theoretically, which he does. This is a terrible spot for Andras here because Charles is going to start betting. It's close to impossible for Andras to fold this turn, I believe. He blocks king queen, he has a flush draw to the queen, and an open ended straight draw, and second pair. 
I think you can expect this to always be a bet from Charles. And what does Steve do, Demps? That's the question. That's, that might be the interest, the most interesting spot here. It's a very yeah. small bet. 4.4. Steve probably has to call one here. Strong hand on this board. For that sizing, he's obviously just had yes, to call. Yes, agreed. And Andras, well, he can not fold this hand, of course. Open a straight draw, flush draw, and second pair. Yeah, he's definitely going to be more concerned that when Steve calls. Not that Steve, you know, has any completely nutted hands too often here. But if we can deduce that our diamond draw is live especially, that'll be a big concern. But if we will call also, which he does. Absolute dream of a river for Charles. I think uh, Steve just taking a bit of time hoping that, you know, he can <laughs> almost bully the uh, button into giving him his showdown. It would probably have to be the nut flush, to be honest, and it would be Andrus most likely to have it, the way the actions went. But against that range of what, one pairs of missed draws, you're thinking sort of 40 to 50% pot? I, I sounds, think so, Dems. I think, I think that sounds perfect. There we go. He has, yeah, I like it. Yeah, good fold. Yeah, I mean, he can value bet very wide all of those hands. Not very wide, but all of his value hands. Can <coughs> sure. Very wide, yeah. Pop the flash. There you go. Right. This is exactly what he's worried about. Is it? It doesn't make sense, right, for Charles to bet a jack on the river, for example. I think flop flush, obviously. Uh, I'm going to wow. say, uh, with the queen of diamonds, not that likely. There wow. aren't that many combos of flop flush. I feel like he should have taken a little more time there, Andres. Yeah, he made up his mind pretty quickly and... No, oh. no time bank cards, or uh, he's got time bank cards there. Interesting. And pocket tens. Do we have a raise here? You say it's a what five and a half people blind jam. Is that is that big enough that we can flat with nearly our entire range because people are disincentivized to overcore? Or is it a little bit too small? Yes, yeah, this is kind of awkward. I, I I expect him just to flat to be honest and proceed. None of the smaller stacks are going to ever get out of line here, right? Because they want to see Andrus eliminated. Right. So, yeah, no one's going to three bear with Ace Five suit and try and ice you. No, and I think the same can be said. Really, I don't think Steve and Paul are really going to attack us too too wide. Well, Andrus is in a flip. Jack six five the flop. Andrus pairs that Jack needs to just fade a ten here. Running clubs. <laughs> it's well, always a sweat, Andres. It's never easy. Any club or 10 would send Andres out. This would be cruel. This would be cruel. Don't do it to him. Guy's showing a lot of heart today. Yeah, he really has. I'll we'll see him stick around a little bit longer. Oh, <laughs> a black card. <laughs> but it is the king that gives him, well, top two. Not necessary for the double up. But he'll take it. Nice. You see... With that doubled up, Andras still the shortest stack on 14 big blinds. It is Tesco with 20. And then a pretty big jump to Ben and Charles now in third place. They are going around the 50 big blind mark. Paul with 70 bigs, but Steve Edouard still out in front holding 81 big blinds. But they are now playing at, I believe, the last six levels today. This is close. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Dem, so yeah, I would right. not be surprised. And he has put it in. You know, Steve is going to be open in lots of hands. We know this. He's going to open, you know, all his jack tens and stuff like this. Andres will be thrilled there when he gets snapped off to see yeah. that he is indeed flipping. I think that's fine. 15 bigs, pairs of pairs, six-handed. Yeah. Let's go. Sure. And we how crazy this final table has been thus far. Oh, jack four, five. Things looking pretty good for the pocket threes thus far. Oh, well, three. He does pick up different outs. Deuce oh, dot in the do wheel. <laughs> Nine on the end. Andras double double. Certainly back over 30 big blinds. 40 bigs deep. Difficult to see Steve doing anything else. Hands not strong enough to three bet call, and three bet folding is, of course, a disaster. Oh. Wow. Well. 8, 9, 10. Ben flops a set. Not for the first time on this final table. But it's a dangerous looking board. But any 10x, any King Jack. Wow, he checks back. Quite surprised. I feel like Steve, it, with a pair and a straight draw, is this 
This is a hand he wants to bet himself because it's such a dangerous board. Well, he is going to. Yeah. Wow, he's wow. going to bet the par. It's gone big. Just trying to smash into these sort of what 8x and 9x and even 10x yeah. that Ben has checked back the flop with, right? That's what's such a brilliant uh, thing about checking here is that Ben, in general, represents a capped range. You know, even. Uh, like Ben can feasibly check back like ace 10 here for absolute sure he's going to check he's going to have some kings and aces check backs that can be put under a lot of pressure and a lot of runouts. and like you say Demps all the 9x and stuff this is working out beautifully for Ben if this board bricks out I think Steve's going to be aware that his sevens are no good and he may he may look to really put max pressure on Ben here a six is a disaster oh <sighs> Jack as well Steve makes the straight wow for sure. I mean, if we're checking back a set of nines, then we should, then we will be checking back queens. Twelve million. And he's going for value twelve million. Of course, Ben has some hands. I guess like two pairs: jack eight, jack yeah. nine, jack ten. All might check back the flop. Okay. He's changing his mind. Mm. I, think, I think he was going to find the fold. Think long, think well wrong. Well done, Ben. And that hurts. Flop a set, six yeah. hands on the final table, and end up folding it. Showing his class though, right? To not just frustration call or anything like this. And look at this. Sevens versus sevens. These are the fun ones. Ben opening the hijack off those 25 bigs. Charles in the cutoff. From what we've seen, Charles will peel this hand. He, he's, you know, his most of his selections have been to call in position rather than three bet, which he does. Now this is interesting. Yeah, and I mean, uh, like Paul's not going to fold this hand. He was just thinking, should he over call or should he squeeze? Paul's taken a lot of the spots today. Yeah, I think uh, what what makes Squeeze attractive here is that Ben is capable enough to uh, open wider than most of that stack depth. Right. You know, being one of the best players at the table, he has decided to peel with, and that's fine. Oh, Roger, wow, this is interesting. He does move all. I like, I like this. I really like this. I like that as well. So many chips in there already when it gets to him. You see, if he gets his three, it picks up about 12, 13 million. Honestly, Ben is hating life today. Like the last few, uh, ironically, he's he's played close to perfect. I think it, uh, we haven't seen him make any missteps. I'm not sure that Ben always folds. He, I, I he probably will. It's probably a little too low in his range to call. She has oh, good no, point. He's Actually, going yeah. For it. Sorry, yeah, yeah. I was thinking Ben would fold, but no, of course. I mean, it's like 18 that. big blinds, you know, I think pocket nines, for example, we always call. Yeah. This is one of those spots where Ben probably is just deciding there's dead money in the pot. It's, an, it's a spot where Roger is incentivized to squeeze a little bit lighter. Exactly. And of course, like we said, the overlay's cool. And the two players behind didn't three bets. So they're probably not that strong, probably always folding to his sure. jam. If he hits, nearly impossible for Ben to get out of it. Whoa, he's found the bricky flop, 985. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, look Six. at this. <laughs> but does wow. give Roger that flush draw. Oh, this would be very cruel on Tolerine. Diamond on the end. Oh, my goodness. That is that. Ben down to just 10 million in chips. Roger with the ginormous double up. And then some with the dead money in the pot. Up to 68 million himself. All my smiles. Don't much <laughs> Poker really is a horrible game sometimes. Jack in the door, followed by Queen Five. Ben needing a king. I say we know Ben. I assume Ben will be jumping over to the 250k. He might might not be, but you know, obviously, absolute crusher in the game. We'll be hoping though. It's not to be ace yeah, on the end. Fun, guys. Thank you. Well, like you say, a shame to lose yeah, Ben. Really Such is. an accomplished player. Um, even on a table like this, such a strong player. Yeah. Yeah, rightly so. Taking some time to think about this. So what? Something in the realm of 15 million, maybe even a bit bigger, out of position. Right. You can have to make it big. Wow. All in. Okay. It. And this is this is one of these situations that's bizarre. It's the lower variance line, isn't it? Because you sure. just stop Steve doing anything to you, and you you just pick up the pot so often. In this instance, of course, Steve will be calling surely with Ace King. I, I mean, mean, he will. It, it, it sounds ridiculous, but I don't think he's going to be absolutely buzzing to, to call no, this yeah. off. And well, we're going to have the biggest pot of the tournament. Yep. I mean, he can never fold. But I, I think Steve will be thinking here that I'm going to be flipping a good amount. Well, this could well be, well, this will be a tournament defining pot. Yep. So that right now, we're going to have about 150 million oh. of the 400 million in play in this pot. And Andres' face, that hates it. 
to hear that, but he's going to love to see yeah. once more he's in a flip. He has the one hand he wanted him to have. Now he's dodged a few of these today. Wow, this is massive. Huh? Can Andras do it again? <laughs> ace, three, four. Any oh, surprise? Wow. Steve O'Dwyer finds that ace. Queen on the turn. Five on the end. That is that. Well, Andrus, he had the spin up, didn't he? They gave him the, the poker gods gave him the sweat from five big blinds all the way up to a chip lead flip. But not to be. And look at that oh. stack of Steve O'Dwyer, just short of 190 million. Oh, oh Ryan, the hand back. Oh, oh no. Here we go. Sorry, Paul. Yeah, this is GG. They have the same stack. Roger opening the button pool with an easy jam from yeah. the big. Roger with the easier call holding kings. And wow. Well, whoever wins this is going to be back in the mix. Yep. Queen, queen, nine. Two clubs. Paul does have a club, so can turn some additional outs here. Jack of clubs on the turn. Here we go. He's in the race. Who doesn't love a bit of drama? Club or eight. Who doesn't love the drama? As good as it gets for Paul. How about the ten of clubs for a straight flush? Oh, seems, seems worthy of this final. Oh, a jack oh. on at the end. Roger up to 98 million. Paul left with wow. just one big blind. Steve O'Dwyer show. There it yeah. is. Then, well, then, no, no, you, then you turn an ace. Nah, that's that's old school. Like, watch. Boom. <laughs> well, one more card to hit, or it'll be the end of. Three on the end. That is that. Pretty cruel exit for him. Running those eights into kings after well, dominating the early play on this final table, turning the shortest stack into the chip lead. Well, at least he's gone big. Given that he's repping a very tight range, having not done it, it's, it's good that he's going to. 140, I don't know about you, but normally when someone doesn't three bet much, but he likes to take a flop, Steve, so I wouldn't be surprised he does call. Yeah, I mean, uh, a seven suited, even sure. if you think, you know, a guy would have to be especially tight for you not to call here, I think. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a flop. Heart, heart. Wow. King, king, ten. It's like a decent um, part of, of uh, Steve's range. Right. Ace you king know, like Steve never has ace king, right? Yeah. So he's just going to put it in. So when Steve calls here, which we know he will, I don't think Steve will raise here. It doesn't really accomplish too much. We can bluff off worse hands, and even hands that beat us a little later in this hand. Right. Steve will always call. He does. This is where Charles needs to keep a cool head and be aware of what the range of his opponent is likely to look like. Right, of course, normally Queen Jack would be a concern, but having two queens in exactly. is not an issue. So when you know your opponent doesn't have ace-king, you know your opponent is unlikely to have king-queen because we have it. So the, m the biggest concern is a hand like king jack. No. Not that often that that's the case. I don't mind this. I was going to say, Charles is going to check his range here pretty much, I isn't think he? so. You know, if you bet and you get shoved on, it's a disaster. We can check and call and evaluate rivers. Steve should never really value bet, excuse me, value bet a 10 twice. Right, Steve's value hands here would of course be a king. Yeah. Um, maybe a hand like nines. I don't think it's even really a concern, just because Steve probably shoves pre, right? This stack there. Right, okay. So it's just it's just the king, like the sure. king, queen, king, jack, and maybe queen, jack. Well, Charles improves to a straight on the river. I'll give him a nice warm feeling. Like the interesting thing here is that Charles will be thinking that Steve has a ten a lot, right? When it goes, the action proceeds like it has. Right. So if we check, our opponent will just always check back. So the interesting thing here is what should we do to try and maximize money in this pot? Ex well, like the, this is the problem when okay. we bet our opponent normally folds a ten. A th well, not normally, but you know what I mean. Yeah. And when like we check, our opponent checks, so it's pretty tough. Charles is going to give he Steve a chance then to block. I kind of like it. And we block. F yeah. Well, Charles now the chip leader. I think I like the way they both play the hand, to be honest. Look at that. That Pretty reaction. Cool. Steve knows if it came a heart, he may have got the lot. 21. I mean, I think they're getting in here. I can't imagine Roger's plan is to 3 bet fold. I think he's the kind of player who Come would 3 bet fold here. Yeah, he's not thrilled. Oh, 
Okay. This is where three-bet jamming is just so much better because we don't wow, put ourselves in the spot. Fold. Yeah. Wow. And, and uh, I don't even. I mean, I, I mean, I don't. Absolutely I don't even hate it that yeah. much. Like, okay. it's hard to think. <clears throat> King seven four two hearts. So from what we've seen from Steve so far, he's C bet heavy, which makes a lot of sense from the button. He does have a bunch of back doors. He can fold out many better hands with nine yeah, high. No pair, no draw kind of hands. And like he goes big, and I, and I, I like that. You know, like Charles, even with a seven, I don't expect him to fold, but you can never be comfortable here, right? Yeah. You're always always thinking there are a lot of bad cards for my hand. That's not one of them. That's a great card for Charles. Undercard to a seven and improves him to a gut shot straight draw. But when... Oh, wow, he is going to go for it, though. I'm sort of surprised, Emps. I mean, it's easy for us to say it, right? Okay, let's go ahead and peel. But if we think that we're already in bad shape, but you are exactly right. Charles calling quickly. There are some hands you're going to call the turn with and fold the river with. This seems to be perfect. Now, this is the Steve O'Dwyer show nine river. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. It's just, it's just, it's just the way it goes. Amazing. This will go check, 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 check. Eighty-five million going to Steve. Seven. Wow. Eight. <laughs> He's almost embarrassed. Steve O'Dwyer retakes the chip lead, pulling in an 85 million chip pot with a rivered second oh, pair. Such a massive swing, you know. Every this, pot. That is, you're right. That is a huge swing. Huge. I mean, there's only 400 million in play, and there was 85 million in that pot. Steve on the button, 6.5 million with king 10. Yeah, I expect to see Charles defend. He's been doing a lot of three betting, and uh, this stack death makes sense to just defend. Eight, eight, deuce the flop. And well, we see, we've seen we've seen it all day really, a really high bet, high C bet frequency from all players, but Steve yeah. Dwyer included. So will he fire here? No, he doesn't. This is perhaps a more standard line holding a hand like this, right? Check. Oh, absolutely. Something. I mean, Steve's going to think that his hand's good a lot of the time. His opponent's going to three bet. The good ace is a very high percent. Right. So we have close to the top of our king high range. This will also go check, check, I think. Steve may actually elect a protection bet, thinking he has the best hand, but probably checks. No, he is going to do exactly what I suggested. All right, so he'll go small, won't he? And there it is. Yeah. Just over, well, exactly one and a half big blinds, in fact. I mean, Charles will call here. It's We have way too strong a holding to fold. And unless a player improves, this normally goes check, check, river. <laughs> I mean, you know. It's just guys, not fair at this point, is it? It really is not fair. Obviously, a clear value bet now for Steve. From what we've seen of Steve, I think he probably goes on this, like, maybe half part here. Yep. <coughs> wow. He does call. Mm, well, Charles' face says it all. Steve has been getting there in these spots, I must be said. And it's funny, things looking a bit more inevitable. And honestly, this is a great candidate because the big blind has is shorter than Charles. Right. You get to put $300,000 of real money pressure on him. Personally, I would love to see a three-bit here. Like, you can basically go, you can go small, 17 to 18K here. He does he has just a flat. flat. But yeah, I think you're right. You can really leverage that yeah. stack situation. Obviously, flatting is completely fine. Just seems like a good spot, you know, to really make Charles shove. And Queen, of jack, course. seven. So Steve O'Dwyer for the first time tonight, flopping top pair. <laughs> I jest, of course. Usually he has a full house. Charles with second pair. And I would like to see a check back. Right. Just, you know, even theoretically. This yeah, is it's, it's not a vulnerable hand, is it? You can check this back and... Uh, sure. I mean, it's just a terrible turn because now Steve semi-bluffs. We have to call. Right, yeah. The showdowns are some ace highs, some jack X. Yeah. Maybe some, some pocket pairs. It's just so like tough. nines, tens. I mean, if we fold here, we're just overfolding massively. I think that Charles must call turn. This is just extremely tough. Got a call. 
<laughs> every time. The perfect river. Yeah, clear value bet now for Steve. If we if we somehow know our opponent has a misdraw, we could check. I don't think that's the case here that often. Our opponent normally bets a draw on flop on the flop. I think, you know, like a good diamond draw, you'd expect Charles to bet the flop. Right. Even if I had like nine ten, right? He probably bets the flop if he's gonna bet. So like water, Steve's misdraws like nine ten suited king ten. Steve could feasibly 3-bet ace-10 here for sure and just right. shove. Probably never has that hand, never has ace-king. So Steve's missed draws are basically 9-10, king-10. Right, and some diamond combos. Right, sure. Charles blocks yep. none of those, so it does make the call. You can certainly understand it. And just once more, Steve's river value bet gets paid off. And look at this, passing the 300 million yep. chip mark. Roger with the same hand he folded from no, the big one. Well, oh. here we go. It's He's snap cool. Caught. And well, Charles is at risk, but Roger with only a few big blinds more. Blinds versus queen seven Tell in the rail. Oh. Well, and that face says it all. Queen 10, queen 10. Yeah. There well, is look the at rail. that rail. It's quite a beautiful rail. Better than most poker rails yeah, I've seen. Your queen seven off. It's not going to be any consolation, though. No. Julie Neuf, your queen seven off, queen I flop. It's given the translation. French. The ladies look gutted. See Sam Schultz here <laughs> and Pascal <laughs> Francois on the rail. Jack for a sweat. Yeah, Jack for the sweat. Ooh, that's a sweat. Eight for a sweat. Jack or yeah. nine would now do the business. And he brings a smile to his face. Okay, four houses. Six outs. Yep, he is right. Six outs. Heading to the river. Will this be the end of Charles? It Six is. on the end. Well, he put in a yeah. pretty strong performance today on this final table. <coughs> Just ran into the buzzsaw that was Steve Edouard toward the end there, losing yeah. multiple pots to him at showdown. Charles at was an eliminated in third place. Not a bad consolation prize, one million dollars. Not many tournaments where you can win that. He's got it for third place. So Phil By a moved random Irishman, no less. Phil moved down to ninth, while Steve O'Dwyer moves up to eighth <laughs> in the all-time money list. All right, guys, we are back already for heads up action. Roger with aces on the button. Steve pairing a deuce, holding six deuce from the big. And so as we said, if Roger could get off to a fast start, there could be a game of this just yet. 25 and a half million in the pot. Roger's hand certainly good enough for a second barrel. Does put the call in. Roger with a little over pot behind, holding 55 million chips. Uh, the flopped flush draw completes. Roger holds the eight of hearts. Still tough to think of many hands he can get value against here. Deuce. He does check back. Steve announces deuce. Roger's aces taking this one down. Wow, what a hand we have here. Steve with kings, Roger with queens. Could this be it? Unbelievable setup. Steve making it 21 million to play. Just the question now for Roger, whether he wants to slow play these queens. We'll make the move now. Let's see the pot up to 42. He does move all in. Steve, snap calls. Kings versus queens doesn't get much colder than that. This heads up match could be over in just a few hands. <laughs> yeah, that was a rookie mistake. Yeah. That was a, that was a rookie mistake. <laughs> 
Roger feels good about it, but he does need a queen, a four to one dog. An ace queen nine, there it is. <laughs> Steve needs a king running spades or running straight. Five diamonds on the turn. Ace on the end does the trick for Roger. That is how quickly things can change. Heads up, hold them. Unfortunately, it's a bad time to do it. I actually really don't mind this, especially if your opponent is opening every button which we have seen to be the case so far. A case of bad timing for Roger. He's gonna be cursing himself for not peeling. 63. We'll give some illusion of what equity. That's what he's done, 63 million. Well, Roger's first three bet of the heads up match met with a four bet. We'll feel like he's playing against a brick wall. Yeah, the most frustrating aspect of this is that, you know, when you three bet a hand that has really good playability post and you do... We're going to watch a great match between two contrasting yeah. styles and, as you say, we're seeing lots of hands. You expect to see this go raise and call. Nothing worse than seeing two tankers play heads up. This is quite the opposite. Fast-paced action, and these guys are throwing punches. Yep. Ace. Something that's... Uh, sorry, Damps didn't mean to interrupt you. Something that's quite refreshing. We haven't seen one limp heads up. It's kind of a yeah, throwback. It's kind of a throwback. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of raising, a lot of free betting. The question is, does Steve feel his hand has enough showdown? Obviously, as the initial aggressor, we can bet a lot. All right, this gut shot, straight draw, and the nine high flush draw here. But Roger with That's top a Great bet. turn for Roger. And the nut flush draw in much better spot with the fact he has ace of clubs. This is interesting. Right, this is probably the, the best ace to check again, isn't it? He does decide to sure. bet. I'm thinking more in terms of Steve's holding here. Our right. opponent shouldn't have that many good aces. We do have a gut shot to the right. nut straight. And also we have the nine of clubs, which is pretty important. If we are behind to a hand like randomly queen 10 or something like this, we can still peel. I would expect him to call. I say so. I'm about to say, so this makes it, everything you're saying makes it a prime candidate to raise, sure. isn't it? We blocked the straight. Yep. We blocked the flush. Our hand might be ahead, but it's pretty much too weak to call. I actually really like this from Steve. This, of course, this Basically is from what we just discussed, he blocks the best straight. He blocks some flushes. Very quick call from Roger. As you'd expect, of course, with yep. that perfect candidate to call here. If we do see a club, this is going to be interesting. Well, does Steve follow through? He has to know that his hand is no good. Like, there are no combinations that Roger leads and calls that don't beat a pair of nines. Right. I mean, it would literally have to be the king of clubs with a four, five, six, seven, etc. 60. I wow. Mean, this is strong, strong poker 60 million chips in a 7-4. And as you've pointed out very quick wow. once again... These guys are playing fast. The thing about this bet, the thing I love the most, is it's super believable. Yeah. Like, like we can easily have a hand. Lap. I mean, obviously we have the ace of clubs, so he never has the nut flush. But we we can have a hand like king nine of clubs that decided to check back flop. Right. This is the it's thing. Certainly feasible. Players these days are so much more balanced in their checkbacks that he sure. can have flushes, can have king jack. Those, there's plenty of club and straight combos that would check back turn. Wow, go. I guess the, the guys are playing some great poker. I must and Steve, say. Steve does the flip back look at his cards as if he had a big hand for throwing them in the muck. Steve raising the button five six off. Roger defends king eight and finds king wow. six deuce. Now this could get interesting. Steve. Now, like, I would expect Steve to bet. This is one interesting thing in poker. People don't tend to incorporate a check raise in here, right? Like, normally when you check raise, these spots were sort of polar to, like, two pair kind of hands or bluffs. I would love to see a check raise here because it, it won't make a lot of sense to Steve. And here we go. So This is nice. You called it exactly. It's true, though, right? Like, it's one of these spots where... 
People don't tend to check Razor King. They will check Call a lot. And now all of a sudden, Steve's going to be thinking, okay, why are you check raising? You, you don't have a really, really good king. You would three bet me pre. Yeah, I mean, this makes absolute sense that you take one off. Right. He has to continue with a six and a king here. Definitely. Ace on the turn now again. this is super interesting now. Because a lot of Steve's float range is an ace high. Right, Steve right. can bet ace high and call a check raise here of because course. the raise makes little sense. So he can have hit that ace. It's not like a some scenarios where it's more like a brick. This one is definitely possible. The thing about this is when Roger check raises, we have to think about his theoretical. Wow, bluffs. Steve. Yeah. Betting here now is this. Is this a case you think he's betting because he wants to protect a six? No. I actually think this is more... Although I'm looking at the sizing and it's kind of intriguing. He's betting just under a third of the pot. Yeah. So when we bet here, we do look to deny equity to two random cards, like a three, four, a four, five, etc. This is a great card for Roger, obviously. Surely this... Yeah. I, mean, I, I feel like Steve was just betting some kind of block bet you think on the turn. I, did, I mean, he's setting... I, I can't see him setting up for a big river bet. Oh, no, sure. Like, I mean, especially on this precise river, it's... One. Wow! Wow! Steve. And it's so hard to be bluffing. It really is. This is what are his natural bluffs? If he floats the flop, there are, there are he has none. Asex. There are none. Or he has a gut shot draw. That's it. I mean, we can we can shove king queen for value also. Yeah. This is what I mean about the time bank thing, right? If Roger time banks out here, I'm super against this. Well, Roger did make such a weird, uh, not weird, but unorthodox check raise on well, the like flop with king. Up oh, he's found yeah. the call. What and a good Steve call. Steve with a grin. Great call from Roger. And the chip stacks swip around. You know, some schools have thought we could limp shove this type of hand at 30 big blinds in depth. Wow! Whoa! Roger just moves all in. I don't think we can fold. We never. W I don't think we three bet shove a better hand at this speed. Yeah, he's going to call. He calls! Yeah. Wow! He, he, he has to call. Like. Roger's going to be shocked to find out what great shape he's in. Is a tiny. Wow, like, Roger's just decided he's just going to rifle it in. <laughs> Roger wants to play big wow. pots. Wow! 50-50 to double look up. Look at the percentages, guys. Here we go. Oh! 8-4, <laughs> oh. deuce, Roger. Pairs wow. that 8. Wow, just and like that. We can start moving that trophy a lot closer oh to his seat. Goodness. 30 bigs. Queen on the turn. Things are a lot nicer now. There are a lot of cards that could have given Steve extra outs. That was not one of them. Three, oh! Three on the river. That is not what Steve needed. Roger Tesca, as quick as that, is your Millions World Champion.